do everything you want to do. Okay, so this is sweet. What's in it? Well, it's um, Abuelita's, it's Abuelita, Abuelita's hot chocolate, Mexican hot chocolate, but I like to um, add a bunch of honey. So it's very sweet because of the honey that I add. Honey and hot chocolate. It's appropriate for your bed. But tonight. That's it. What's so special about tonight? I've never seen anyone do cheers with cheers. hot chocolate. <laughs> Why not though? Yeah, why not? We set the trend. I mean, chocolate is good. We should do cheers on chocolate. It's hot though. It's quite hot. It's difficult to drink now. But so here we are tonight. This is our well, it's, tech, it's our third night here, but we've only been here for 48 hours. Third night in Destin. Third night in Destin. So how do you feel about Destin so far? It's cold. Oh my God, yeah, uh, that's an understatement. Well, maybe we just feel like we're really cold because we haven't been cold in over a year. We haven't been cold in almost two years. Yeah, for Florida, this is cold. I mean, it's November, so it's kind of uh, silly to be talking about being cold in November. That's... Last year in November, um, it was warm. I remember, like, even Thanksgiving Day, we went to the beach, and it wasn't like a cold day. We were dressed in beach clothes. A lot of people who are not from Florida assume that all of Florida is hot in the winter. But the reality is the farther south you are, the warmer it is. But as you approach the, uh, the north, where we are, Destin, Pensacola area, it's really cold and gloomy. I would not have guessed this area was going to be. As, I mean, I know I knew it was going to be colder. My dad lives in the... Um, Pensacola area. He did mention that it gets cold up here. He was like, yeah, it's, it's, he, what he said on the phone was that he's like, oh yeah, it's so nice in the evenings now. We can go outside. That's what he said. He's like, yeah, it's really nice. It really cooled down. I didn't know he meant it's freezing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like you really feel winter here. This is just as cold or if not colder than where we lived in like the Beaumont Palm Springs area in California. Around this time. Around yeah. this time. Yeah. And I thought that was cold. I, I like honestly hated winter. I dreaded winter every single year. Even though I was born and raised in the area, I really could not take the winter. I thought I was never going to be cold. I literally, when we left California, I told myself, I, pro I made a promise that I was never going to be that cold again. Mm -hmm. So here we are now. We're cold again. But I like this city. It's beautiful. It's really nice, though. Yeah. It's just cold. I don't know what I'm supposed to do in the cold. It's hard to be at the beach when you're so cold. So anyway, what have you been working on this today? Um, been working on just okay. So I mean, I I went I went down a bunch of different uh, avenues, if you will. Rat holes. Rat holes. I went. I fell down a lot of different rat holes. When I was looking up um, just the state of fertility in 
in women today? That was the question. Fertility. Fertility. And pretty much why, okay, let me tell you an issue that I've experienced since, um, since we've been trying to conceive. Since when you tried to get pregnant in, what was that? That was November of 2019? What no, was that it was that? before that, yeah. Anyway, yeah, it was definitely before that. Because I know before Amara, we were trying to conceive before, it, it, I mean, I think it was like two years before Amara, I was pregnant with Amara. So, and I just felt so horrible about all of the medical issues that I was going through prior to becoming pregnant with Amara. And even when I was pregnant with Amara and after, like during the birth and then after the birth, I just went through a really, really rough time medically. And it, it was shocking to me because to be honest, I've always thought of myself as really healthy. I, I thought I took care of myself pretty well and that I ate well, I exercised. I'm like almost never sick. So I really, really thought that I was, I was like tough and healthy and I could handle anything. But, you know, this reproductive journey really um, kicked me down. And well, really, for some context, you had um, uh, two, three abortions. <laughs> what in the world? Well, <laughs> a stuck. miscarriage is a form of abortion. Okay, but you know, when people say abortion at me, like they usually think something else. So okay. I wanted every word, single but... pregnancy that happened. Okay, just so we all know that. I really, really tried to, you know, I was trying to get pregnant. And so I had a miscarriage and that the first miscarriage, okay, first we were trying to get pregnant, didn't happen. So we started to see a fertility physician, a specialist. And then I started going through some of the um, fertility treatments that they had. It's just like a sequence of like, well, first we do this, then we do this, then we do this. So I went through all of the testing, all the hormone testing and the ultrasounds and they checked all my insides and my hormones and such. And they kept saying, oh, you're fine. Everything's normal. Um, and then we did the HSG. I think it's what it's called procedure, which is supposed to, it, the main thing is to get an, I, it's to take an x-ray of your fallopian tubes to make sure they're not clogged, but at the same time, they're going to push liquid through your fallopian tubes. So if they are clogged, that will probably unclog them. So after that procedure happened, uh, and boy, did it hurt, but anyway, um, after that happened, we got pregnant immediately. I got pregnant. I get it. I got, pregnant, got pregnant immediately, like right we, after. No, I said I, I said I. Okay. I got pregnant immediately after that. And, but um, I also had a miscarriage pretty quickly after that too. So I was, what, five, six weeks pregnant. And then... We only got to be happy about this pregnancy for a week until it was like, oh, you're having problems, you're bleeding, you're in so much pain. And then boom, it's like, oh, you're having a miscarriage. Go home and have it. We're not going to help you. They literally said, just go home. Yeah, they, they didn't have a lot of, they didn't have any <laughs> and answers. nothing, no answers for me. Well, how much of that was a factor of your age versus, you know, uh, health condition? Well, I don't know. So at the time, how old were you? At the time, well, what was I? 32, maybe? That would have been 28. No, I, I think it was 31. And statistics yeah. uh, demonstrate that by the age of 35, I think by the age of 30, a significant amount of your eggs are gone. They're no longer available for, for, for fertilization. So I wonder how much of that played a part into the, uh, in the multiple miscarriages that happened and the complications that happened 
leading up to Myron's birth. Okay. Well, anyway, we, so the next pregnancy that we had, which was about, I think like two cycles after that, I was pregnant and that one, it lasted until after 10 weeks. And then, and then I, it was an ectopic pregnancy. I was, you know, that was very painful. And I ended up staying, like holding on to that pregnancy and not going to figure out what was wrong with me because there were so many signs. I had issues, but I never, but like, I never went to the doctor about them because I kept, I kept looking up on Google and going, hmm, it seems like sometimes women experience this and they have healthy pregnancies. That's probably me. Like, why would I, why would there be an issue? So it's probably me. I'm just having pain, whatever. And ended up having to go into emergency surgery because the fetus was already breaking out of my right fallopian tube and there was a ton of blood in my abdomen. So I had to be rushed to surgery. You handled that pretty well. You really well. Thank you. It felt horrible. <laughs> Like towards the end, like right before surgery, I, before like I was like drugged or anything like that, there was a moment where I was like, okay, I need to use the restroom first, you guys. And then I tried to go use the restroom and it was like, I couldn't hold myself up. I was really like holding onto the walls so that I didn't fall. (laughs) And like, I don't know, it was, it was so bad, but I was trying not to show anyone because for some reason I, I, you know. So I didn't, I didn't want anyone to think I was like some little whiny brat or something. So I was just like, keep quiet. Okay, okay. You know, and just try to get through it. But yeah, that was hard. Um, anyway, so that whole thing happened. <clears throat> and then after a while, I was just really upset and I didn't know how to process this and trying to figure out exactly what happened and what was wrong with me and all of that. And I did take a break and then COVID happened. And then, and then we just, you know, whatever. But then I think that summer we started talking about getting back on to our let's try to have a baby thing. All right. Like, get the, <laughs> okay, get, whatever. We I'll have tell a you baby. The story. Get to the juicy part. Like. All right. Well, um, so anyway, and then we finally got pregnant, or I got pregnant, and that one, well, it worked out in the end. I had the baby, but during that pregnancy, I also had a few scares, you know, pregnancy threats or risks, you know, some things were going on with my body, so I still had some issues, and and then I had the baby. I had preeclampsia. So that was another thing that through the whole, you know, it was like the birth was an emergency and then the, and then after I had the baby, I had to go back to the hospital because of the preeclampsia or maybe it was full eclampsia at that point. I don't even know, but I had all these complications and I thought I was going to die and crazy stuff happened, but okay. I'm alive now. Live to tell the tale, yeah, but have a baby. we have a great baby. She's amazing. And she's 15 months now. (laughs) But what I was, um, so I had issues with getting pregnant, staying pregnant, and then the birth and the recovery. All right. The whole thing. It just, fertility has been a huge problem for me. My mom and everyone before her did not have an issue ever. So everyone's surprised that I'm just not able to just like poop out babies all the time. Cause if you look at my mom, she like, it seems like when I was younger, my mom was always pregnant, always pregnant. Every other year there was a new baby in the house, you know? So, um, it's, it was so easy for her. And, um, Recently, I got together with a mom group. Everyone in this mom group is like on their first batch of kids. So everyone just had their first and they all, I'm actually the one with the most experience, which is crazy. So 
because my baby's the oldest, everyone else is pretty fresh. But when they were sharing their stories, what I noticed the common theme here is every single one of these ladies had a problem getting pregnant. Every single one of them had at least one miscarriage. And they all, some of them had thought had their births were fine. Some of them had issues with the birth also. And I'm just like, you know, and some of these women are younger than me. And then some were about like my age ish. Oh, you say younger or old? Well, probably in, I'm 35 now. So these, um, I would say maybe late 20s, early 30s. So I think I am actually the old woman <laughs> hanging around now. But, you know, um, it just, it was really interesting given that every one of them is having issues getting pregnant. They're all having fertility, major fertility issues. So do you okay. think that there's a, there's something sinister going on? I think there's, there's some, for some reason, everyone's having fertility issues. Excuse me. Even um, other friends that we know, that we're actually friends with, um, you know, who are new married couples, they've also, you know, we found out recently that a couple of them have been trying to conceive for a few years now. What do you think? And so? they're struggling as well. Okay, so um, a lot of these issues, I do believe that we have we're having major issues with our endocrinology, our hormones. Our That's hormones weird. are out of whack. Okay, so when I was going through a bunch of articles and watching a bunch of videos today, um, male fertility and female fertility is just messed up right now. Significantly. Yes, yeah, significantly. Both are just terribly messed up. And you mean nationwide or globally? Nationwide and globally, just all over, everywhere in the world. Actually, I wouldn't say globally. Yeah, globally. Um, they're popping out a lot of babies all over Africa. So all over Africa. Um, globally. Yes, Africa is um, not really having much of an issue, but globally, every pretty much every single developed country is having this problem. Every developed country. And the developing countries are starting to see it too. So you may not, it may not look like India is having a problem, but India is like, they're kind of going, hmm, hmm, seems like the ladies are, you know, somehow coming up with these issues. And you know why? They do have a lot of our products and they have our fast food. So I'm pretty, I would not be surprised. I know we gave them diabetes. So I'm pretty sure we're going to give them all fertility issues too. Uh, eventually. So you're, you're, you're suggesting that so a lot of the things, the food that we eat, mm. especially here in the Western world, and by proxy uh, globally, is affecting both male and female fertility. Okay, so yes, um, it's not just what we're eating, though. I mean, it's it's actually it's really in everything that we consume. It's not just our food. Yes, our food is almost everything we eat is bad. Um, if you look at the, just look at the ingredients in all your food, everything that you eat is not just like one thing that you just, that you could just pick out of the garden or, you know, it's not just one animal that you're eating. It, you're not eating all completely whole foods. Even if you shop at whole foods, you're not eating whole foods. You're, you're yeah. eating. Yeah. The food's not fresh. It means that the foods are processed. Okay, they're not made from whole ingredients, as in like a whole food would be like a whole food meal would be like if I like got, you know, fresh organic garlic, onions and carrots and then some beef that we just slaughtered in the backyard and I made a meal out of it. Okay, all of these ingredients are maybe made from produced in our garden or our farm 
or maybe, you know, locally. And hopefully they don't have any pesticides, any um, antibiotics, and a lot of, you know, chemicals that are pretty much found in every single thing that we eat, okay? Almost everything we eat, including our fruits and vegetables, have chemicals in them, okay? And these chemicals are killing us. They're toxins that are, um, they're destroying our organs. And are some of those most important, uh, very important organs are our reproductive organs. And those organs are taking a huge hit. And we're seeing it when we finally start to try to have babies. Now, a lot of people don't really know that they're, that they're being affected because, oh, oh, here's another thing. Most people don't try to have kids until they're a little bit older. So all their life from age like 17, to age 29 or something like that, they've been taking birth control. Uh -huh. So that's another thing. So they're putting all these chemicals in their body to screw up their hormones for so many years, for like a whole decade. And then they're like, oh, I'm just gonna go off birth control. Like my hormones are, they're just gonna kick back into gear naturally and everything's gonna be cool and I'm going to have a baby. Um, it's screwed with your uh, endocrine system, and, and and birth control has been relatively new. I think it came on the scene around the seventies, yeah, seventies or late sixties. Mm -hmm. So we're just now starting to see the effects of it. We are just starting even. to see the effects. They came around the sixties, seven or seventies, right? Um, and I don't even think every woman was every woman was necessarily on birth control, especially the ones in Africa that were not on birth. Yeah, control. the ones in Africa, and also like the seventies. Not every woman was like a working woman. It wasn't as common as it is right. as it is now, yeah. right? So a lot of the women were not on birth control until like the nineties, especially in this decade now. Literally, the nineties and the two thousands. Yeah. Of a lot of almost all the women now it's like very commonplace to start yourself on birth control even as a teenager um, and they try to start getting teenage girls on birth control in high school um, because they would say that oh it clears your acne and you know I mean you know you're a teenager and <laughs> you know you're probably gonna like do things and go out and stuff they don't like believe in like you know let's just try to teach them a different way so yeah basically what you said, or anything you, like that. yeah chastity is out the window yeah it's when like, i was in high of, school it was not about like teachers and a lot of basically a lot of girls younger girls especially in our generation have been trained to not even consider abstinence as an option. Just pop the pill and you'll be fine. Yeah. And it's been that way over years. It's always been that way. I mean, the only people who, the only girls who lean towards abstinence are those girls who came from like very strict households like mine. But everyone else was like, what are you dumb? Of course, just use birth control. And then you can do whatever you want. Like, why are you holding back? So going forward, it, you know, all the girls my age, I mean, it was amazing. Back then when I was in 10th grade, most of my friends started birth control. We were 15. Mm, that's interesting. Okay. And then now, so they're all around in their 30, they're all 35-ish right now. Okay, right, right there. That's that's what I was asking you originally. How much of that is a factor of age versus what we're eating? I think a control? lot of it could be a factor. I mean, I think age could play a factor, but I don't, what they want to do in the media is blame it all on age. I don't think it's all age. I actually feel like most of this is the fact that they have been throwing terrible chemicals into our body in convincing us that we need to take these chemicals and put them into our body since we were young. Actually, since we were babies, we grew up putting chemicals in our body 
up until now that were hurting us, that were killing our organs and ruining our fertility. Okay. Now I want to also say things like, um, also the products that we use. Okay. The products that we use have tons of chemicals that are hurting us. Yeah. They always say like, oh, and parabens, you know, it's going to drive you scared. It's not good for you. Stuff like that. No, like, it's not just that. Like there are so many other even more dangerous chemicals that are in these products that are destroying our fertility that are very, very toxic to all of our organs. Okay. Um, and another thing, so, you know, the last 10 years or so, right? a lot of groups or, you know, people have been watching documentaries and saying, oh, we need to be healthy. We need to eat organic. We need to do this and take vitamins and stuff like that. Um, which demographic wise, which group says, let's be healthy and eat organic and let's read the back of the ingredients and make sure we're not taking anything dangerous and putting dangerous stuff in our bodies. Which demographic group does that? Well, I don't know you tell me. Really? You don't know? Well, to me, it seems like it's the one demographic group that doesn't seem like they're as affected by the chemicals as the other demographic groups. Okay. Um, Oops, so. Which demographic are you talking about? <laughs> are you women? No. We'll clarify. I don't know. Okay, so the white people. Oh, that. Well, I, well what I really. So it's very obvious. Okay, so um, now we're going to get into uh, race stuff. Um, people of color, especially black people, um, are uh, black women, especially. I think this statistic are, it was 48% more likely to have complication, no, complications or miscarriages. That's a really high statistic. And it was something like that. I can actually check, but, and then also there, five times more likely to, I think it was, yeah, have complications during their birth, you know. So preeclampsia, um, you know, anything that could kill the mother. And so there are so many issues right there. That's a huge problem. They're more likely to have issues with miscarriages, issues with, um, you know, even having a safe birth at all and even getting pregnant than the um, white counterparts. Oh, and they're five times more likely to get abortions than their white counterparts. Okay, so, so I think there are that, other factors. Are you saying this because, um, I mean, the infertility or fertility issues affects both they affect all races, everybody. It affects women, period. Have, so my question is, when you isolate these different races, are you saying that it's affecting one race more than the other? I'm or? saying that it's affecting um, people of color a little bit harder, a little bit more than it is affecting the white people. Okay. And like, yeah, I mean, I don't necessarily like to get into that specifically, but yeah, it is a little bit more on that side. Okay. So, and I mean, we've all talked, I mean, you can, everyone talks about this and like, there's so many disparages in healthcare and whatnot, uh, racial disparities in healthcare and that certain people don't always get the care that they need. They don't always have the right understanding of what's going on with them and their issues and sometimes there are issues that they kind of bring up to their physicians that are just sort of pushed aside I mean there I've watched a couple documentaries today about people sharing their stories 
and it you know it was really sad but what i'm also saying is that if we look at our products and we look at the the food that we're consuming um, the worst food in the world or the worst food that we can consume that actually causes us like terrible damage is, of course, we know fast food and junk food, which demographics are more likely to eat McDonald's and junk from the grocery store. You know, which demographics I, I are more likely going. to I, eat listen, the healthier foods? Okay, I get where you're that. Going. But my question is, I be, you know, when it when originally you said it, it was a global phenomenon, a global problem, fertility issues. So now when you isolate these or you explain it in terms of race, then it counters the original point that fertility issues affect people globally. And it also affects affects men. Well now well. I'm going. So I'm like trying to, I'm trying to get a more of a detail kind of thing because what I'm going to I'm trying now, to get a clear understanding of what, what I'm going saying. into now is I want to wanted to just sort of explain or bring up a lot of the the what are you doing? Okay, so no, what I want to get into is. Some of the horrible things that we're consuming. Okay. And this stuff is, I mean, everyone in the world is consuming a lot of these products. Like, um, I just looked this up a little while ago. Okay, mm -hmm. so head and shoulders, the shampoo. Um, the shampoo? Okay. Yeah, the shampoo, head and shoulders, right? You know the shampoo. Yeah. Um, okay, so. Everyone knows the shampoo. Actually, it's global. Everyone uses this globally. I know India and Pakistan also use head and shoulders. I and used huge. head and shoulders a lot as a kid. I know. Because I, I remember the early 2000s, there was just like commercial after commercial, commercial. Exactly. Head and shoulders. Commercial after commercial. And then think about the celebrities that were on those advertisements. Mm. I remember the one with Jennifer Lopez. Like looking back, <laughs> <laughs> my favorite one was the one with Troy Paul Mount. The football player from the Steelers. So, I mean, it, you know, if we do want to get into the whole racial disparity thing, weren't that were the ads geared toward um, any specific demographics? Do you think? I'm sure they were. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, when I was looking at the ingredients, actually, I should probably pull up a list. Yeah. Um, because I had this on my phone. Um, I just wanted to see like what was actually bad in these things and um, head and shoulders just came to mind so I wanted to see it and then I found an article that talked about the most harmful ingredients that are in this thing and what those harmful ingredients do to your body. So we have methyl lysothiazolinone or MIT, right? This chemical is known to damage the nervous system. Okay. Then we have selenium sulfide. This ingredient is used in many anti dandruff shampoos, but is known to cause cancer. All right. Then we have zinc pyrithione. Pyrithione. You get it. All right. This ingredient has many side effects, including nausea, irritation, skin rashes, hair loss hair loss in a shampoo <laughs> why wait wait it causes hair <laughs> yeah, loss yeah it causes hair loss wow. it causes hair loss head and shoulders causes hair loss but one of the most side effects is its organ toxicity okay so exposure to this chemical can cause organ toxicity and it can affect the following all right so liver and kidney um, can be damaged to exposure to toxic chemicals. In many cases, it can lead to liver and kidney failure. Um, respiratory, it can cause asthma. Um, there are asthma-related deaths. And then, yeah, so you should not really That's expose. That's wow. Yeah. That 
But if you're using the, this ingredient a lot, I mean, and hey, in the future, if something happens, I, you know, I mean, I won't say let's all point fingers at the shampoo, but this is just one example of the problems that are in all of our ingredients for all the products that we use, our shampoos, our lotions, our skincare products. Our skin is our biggest organ and it soaks in everything and puts it into our body. And then our body gets it. Uh -huh. You remember when I was talking about the sunscreens? You're I'm always right. having an issue okay, with maybe I should film the, the amount of sunscreen people coat on their body. And a lot, of, a lot of times it's not very clear what's in these products, especially if you don't purchase them organic or you pay attention to the ingredients. Mm -hmm. but that's just one of the many products. That I'm that's just on. one of the many products that we use on a daily basis. Okay. So also this chemical can cause cardiovascular and hematologic um, issues. Um, it can affect your blood pressure. And in some rare cases can cause acute or chronic leukemia. It can affect the ner nervous system, um, causing a whole, like a huge, large amount of issues that includes seizures, dementia, Parkinson's disease, coma, and death. And this <laughs> your shampoo kill will you. kill you. Is your shampoo killing you? Hmm. <laughs> Which I think should be a great article that I should. Is your shampoo killing you? Um, okay, so. That would be a make a good clickbait title. And at the very end of this chemical, the grand finale of what this chemical does, okay, it can affect reproductive health. All right, so this includes, um, so it affects your reproductive health like this. Infertility, Wow. right? Um, so you may not even be able to have kids. Okay, so it's screwing with your fertility, early pregnancy loss. Wow, miscarriages. Hmm, who knew? We're all having miscarriages now. Um, impaired fetal growth, fetal death, low birth weight, premature birth, birth defects, learning difficulties, early and delayed puberty, menstrual irregularities. Bad stuff, right? Bad stuff that can be happening. That's to your body. And this is which which uh, component is that? So, or what? So this chemical that's causing all this problem, zinc pyrithion. Zinc pyrithion. If hey, read your ingredients. If you actually see, see zinc pyrithion, it's highly dangerous, highly toxic. It can cause all these problems in your body. If you have enough of that chemical that if you're exposing yourself to enough of that chemical in your body, if it builds up, it has, you know, the potential to cause all these problems. I wonder, I wonder what are the product that that's, has that zinc promethium? Zinc pyrithium. Pyrithium. Um, I don't know, but it's in head and shoulders. And I would assume that it's probably on almost every other product out there because I mean, it's a shampoo. It's a shampoo. Mm -hmm. So this is a very common product that everyone uses. Don't we all wash our hair? Yeah. It shows, so it's it might be in a lot of shampoos out there, right? Okay, so the fourth ingredient that is also very toxic to our bodies that head and shoulders has is sulfates. So this agent includes sodium lauryl sulfate, sodium laureth sulfate, amongst others. Sodium lauryl sulfate and sodium lauryl sulfate have been linked to neurotoxicity, cancer, endocrine disruption, and skin irritation. You guys, endocrine disruption, that endocrine, anything in your endocrine system, that's your hormone regulation. If it's screwing with your hormones, it's just screwing. Hormones are like those little, um, those, those messengers that in your body that tell your body to do things. You know what I mean? that like manages the chemicals and the every, it operates your body. It keeps it moving, functioning properly. And when your endocrine system is screwed up, then your body does things that it shouldn't do. 
Um, and to support reproductive health, you need two main hormones, progesterone and estrogen. Yeah. And if this substance affects that, and most people in the modern world use shampoo that contains zinc pyrogen, that's a big concern. Remember when I was um, pregnant this the first time and we checked my progesterone levels and they were super low? I mean, my progesterone levels were screwed up. They told me at the hospital that that doesn't even matter. But if your progesterone levels don't aren't in your body at a really high amount, you can't even hold your pregnancy. You will miscarry if they drop, okay? Your HCG and your progesterone have to be up. At therapeutic levels. Yeah, at therapeutic levels those at, in the very beginning of the pregnancy, like just for it to even hold. Okay, so yeah, if something is disrupting your endocrine system. So you think that bad. the argument uh, uh, for the <laughs> fact that we these these types of chemicals in our food in our product products that we use in our body affects fertility more than age or the fact that people are having kids uh older absolutely i think that you know it probably wouldn't be that bad if this was like just if these chemicals were just like oh it's just in that product over there just don't use it no, these are hiding in everything we've been consuming since birth. And then everything that our parents mm -hmm. have been consuming. So by the time it gets into my, like at my, when I was born all the way up until now, these chemicals have really been, been like, you know, in my body, screwing things up maybe my mom only got it when she was like teenager and up because I think when she was younger like you know things were a little bit more wholesome back then and then you know they started to get less and less and fast and fast food and junk and crap and like consume 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 all these terrible toxins everywhere we go right so by the time I'm here I am thinking I'm healthy because I seem to be functioning well. But now I'm looking at what we have, the ingredients we have in every single thing that we consume and everything I've been consuming since birth. Even the building blocks of me in my mother's womb probably were full of toxins, okay? So why is this happening? If these companies know that these toxins, I think it's common knowledge now, all this stuff is on the internet. It's not like the company can go, oh, yeah, I didn't know that we, that this stuff was bad for you guys. Yeah, sure, we'll take it out. Come on. So um, everyone knows that these are bad for you, mm -hmm. but they still keep them in there. They know everyone still needs the product. So everyone's still gonna buy the product. Why are they, um, are they, is, do you guys, do you think that they're really trying to kill us? Or at the very least, do you think they're really trying to keep us sick with everything we consume? And do you think that this is also part of a great plan to reduce the population? I knew you were going there. <laughs> to reduce the population by affecting our fertility and especially affecting the black and brown communities and keeping them, you know, those numbers a little bit less. You know, I couldn't even argue against that point because a lot of things that we're starting to learn about with the democratization of information and all that, that we're finding online, a lot of this information we didn't have access to years ago. Mm -hmm. But now we're starting to understand that the food we're consuming is unhealthy. The products we're using on our body is unhealthy. And there's also so, well, they were considered conspiracy, but more and more we're learning that it's true where there seems to be a handful of people that want to consolidate power. They're already in power, but they want to consolidate power. And to, in order to do that, 
they have to not only control the, the population or the number of people, but they also have to keep us, uh, I want to say more like puppets, puppets that are just like, you know, you just like robots. You just go to work and you go home and you die. You don't really ask one any questions. You don't buck power. So there's, yeah, there's probably like a larger thing going on there. But I don't, I don't know if we have enough proof. They're keeping us completely dependent on them. Because, I mean, we don't, like, it's in, it's in everything. It's in, we, we don't even know another way. Most, we have to eat the food from the store. Mm -hmm. Most of us do not know how to get our own food. And if you say, well, of course I'm a good cook. I can cook home food. With which ingredients are you cooking? Where with? are you getting your ingredients? Are you going to the store and buying meat that's already slaughtered? Are you buying vegetables that someone already picked and washed for you? Or in some cases, already chopped and ready to go? Are you buying spices that have already been like perfectly, you know, ground or mixed together for you? Are you, the other ingredients you use to make your stew, are you going, are you growing your tomatoes and then, you know, cooking them or making your own paste? Or are you going to the store, you know, the can, <laughs> a can so, of tomato paste? So in other words, processed you know? versus organic. We are so addicted. We are actually so dependent on it that it's, we can't even... Even when we know that it's bad for us, we're just like, well, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And this is so much easier because otherwise I have to learn how to do something else. Or we have to go to a farm and kill our own cow. And then what are we going to do with all this meat? The freezer's not big enough. <laughs> and like, um, I mean, making our own shampoos, we can do that. We can make our own lotion and shampoo. We can do better for ourselves but we would have to learn how. So you're challenging people to start paying attention. Wake up, read the labels, learn and understand that there's a lot of things that we're consuming. I know it's not good for us. It's effect, obviously affecting it's the fertility. It's poison. It's poison. It's straight systems. poison. And it's time to start growing your own food and eat, eating organic. I mean, it's, it's, easy. It's, it's easier said than done because yeah. I mean, most of people I would say do not even live in a space where they can just. That most people don't have a backyard. If you think of most of the population, I would see most people congregate in cities yeah. where they're just living, you know, in apartments and everyone's stacked on top of each other. We don't have a backyard where we can grow our own vegetables. If you it actually requires a lot of space mm -hmm. to grow. I mean, you need a, a bunch of different plants just to have enough of that particular vegetable to keep coming, you know, to right. keep producing that food for you so that you won't, you know, have any, um, you know, time without that vegetable. You won't lack at any point. Well, yeah, because so, even as much as we know all this stuff, it's a lot still, of work. We we'll still go to the grocery store. We we'll still go produce. to the grocery store. I mean, yeah, we can be going to farmers markets, and we probably should. That's probably we probably should be supporting more farmers markets. Um, as as close as or, or truly organic as it can that's be. as close as we can get if we're not doing it ourselves. I think. Um, yeah, I guess that's the, the best we can do, but some of these farmers market vendors, they source them from bigger wholesalers. They're not truly. You think so? Or you don't think that they're like, they have a farm? I don't know. I don't, unless I vet you and I, you show me your farm or show me a video or something like that. I mm -hmm. struggle with believing some of these farmers market vendors. I see. I mean, you never know. 
But yeah, I mean, everything that it's in everything we consume on a daily basis, not even just that, but also think about what's in our water. Didn't the other day we saw um, there was, I don't know if it was the news or if it was a documentary, but there was something, there was this chemical that was in the water at, at another state, in another state. Um, and I don't know, they did tests. And what is that in the water of Flint, Michigan? Okay, yeah. Yeah, lead in the water. Think of what else is in the water. Yeah, okay, water. so the water is affecting us. I don't know how how good these filters are that we buy. And also, are the, what, aren't there chemicals in the filter? I know, there's chemicals in the filter. <laughs> like, when you feel them out, they're like these chemical beads or something. Well, it's supposed to be a candle. Uh, I know when we were younger, it was, mm -hmm. we used ceramic candles. They call them candles, but what it does is water can pass through it through the process of osmosis and it leaves the dirt on one side and the water goes on the other side. But these brute filters or some of these filters that they sell in the store, I don't really know the mechanism or what's in them. Yeah, I don't know we how just they work. trust it. We're just like, oh, I guess it's better than nothing. And then we just use them. So I'm not sure um, if even those might be toxic, who knows? And then, and then, <laughs> In addition to all of this, there's the pollution. The air is heavily polluted, especially in the larger metropolitan areas. Yeah. So, um, but okay, the, I saw there, there was a study done. Um, I think it, I want to say, is Minnesota or Missouri, which one of those are like the farming states? <laughs> I would imagine it's Missouri. It's okay. Minnesota's cold. I don't know. <clears throat> okay, well, one of the farming states that starts with an M. I know I'm terrible with all this. Okay. Um, they took data from the men. Their sperm data, right? From the men in that state. And not just the farmers. It was just the farm state. And keep in mind that um, since tons of farming is going on, there's like, you know, fertilizers. Those are chemicals that are in the air, okay? Um, it's got urea in it. Most of them have urea. Urea. I mean, I guess that is that bad for our fertility? Oh. I don't know. But um, whatever is in, the, in that, um, like the fertilizers and everything like that that they use for these farms, the pesticides also, I think, um, is a huge problem. So the chemicals they're using on the on growing these crops in this state, I mean, like it's heavily polluting the air, right? So even people who don't work on farms, just regular people who have other jobs, they checked their um, sperm count, right? And then they also looked at um, a neighboring state. I don't know. I think it was Illinois, like Chicago or something. Anyway, they compared them. The farm state <clears throat> had. Um, there, it was like 43% less active sperm mm -hmm. and they're like young, like men. Really? Yeah. In the States that uh, have. <laughs> compared uh, to the, um, compared to the regular state, but the farming state was the, the one suffering, farmers. right? Why? Um, they, what they're saying is that the, um, the chemicals used in farming it's okay. just so toxic to human beings that even if you're not a farm worker, it's getting it's to the air. Yeah. It's in the air. It's everywhere. You know, a good example yeah. is what's happening in North Carolina. There's some city in North Carolina where they have huge pig farms. Uh -huh. And all the waste from those pig farms are emptied out into the cities in uh, their they're, they're, they're Okay, so what happens is when it rains, all of that water, all of that waste evaporates into the air mm -hmm. and it, it rains on the citizens and they're all getting sick from it. It made news 
Um, there have been a lot of petition to move those pig farms away from there, but it's been like that for a long time. And the inhabitants of those cities are predominantly low income, predominantly black and brown people. Uh, and people are getting like way. poop rain? Poop rain, pig poop rain. Oh it's my pig. God. And the whole, the air smells all the time. Their homes, their air, everything they breathe. So it's oh, that no. stuff. Yeah, that's really bad. So, okay, here's my question now to you. Do you think there's a higher power out there or like an, like the elites or, you know, another group who's causing all this and doing it intentionally to, you know, to us? Or do you think we're just killing ourselves? We're not thinking and we're just, it's capitalism. I would, I, I, if, to be honest, I would, I would choose the latter because the first part, we don't have enough proof. Plus, human beings, doesn't matter whether uh, these people that we consider the elites or the 1% of 1%, mm -hmm. they're just human beings that we're all living this human condition. We all die. Generations past all died. It doesn't matter which one or how powerful that the individual was, they all died. So this generation, regardless of how wealthy they are, I think that what happens is when you have you've been a billionaire for so long and there's generations and generations of billionaires. And at some point you want more power. Think about even poor people or um, anyone who you need power. I've always struggled with some of the jobs that I work at where, you know, you have these middle managers who are toxic, who are intoxicated with the little power that they have and they choose to micromanage their subordinates. Usually when people have something and they've had it for so long they're the ones who can't control them just themselves they want more of it absolute power corrupts absolutely and i think that those small percentage of people who have a lot of money they just want to consolidate that power and sometimes it can be even like comedic to them they have fun watching regular people the working class dance to their bids. Uh, let's see what will happen if we just like make them lose their businesses because of some common cold or you know you know whatever it can like they they I, I would even, all these politicians some of them are very narcissistic people and they have fun watching other people suffer under the, their whim. So that said, there's a very dark underbelly of capitalism. It's not talked about a lot. Uh, and what it does is it makes people, um, they, they operate or they prioritize money and they'll do anything for it. Uh, and at the expense of, Auntie, just fellow citizens. So when you have a product that's already, they know it's going to kill people. Think my, think what happened in the situation with Marlboro and cigarettes. Think the uh, opioid crisis. Think the even mm -hmm. with the vaccines. There's a when these people who are in charge and have a lot of wealth and power. When they want to move a product, they don't really care what the regular people, regular masses think. They don't care what the expenses. And they'll push that agenda. So when you have a lot of them pushing the agenda, that's when you have these um, problems that seem to be like, it, it comes off like a, uh, like it was planned. Oh, we want we want to kill these people. But I I think that they're just I'm they giving just them the benefit of that. Money. They just want to make they a lot don't of money. care what the price is. Yes. Or the they don't care about the casualties. They're just no, I just want to get more money. We're just gonna make money. It doesn't matter who dies. I think that's what's happening. Because recently with the crypto crash that's going on with um 
or this is on a tangent, but just wanted to point, point out the fact that there's a lot of what there's a small percentage of, of wealthy people, and when they consolidate power, they want more of it, and they'll do anything to cons to consolidate that power, to get more of that power, and I think that's what's happening. Well, maybe it's the latter, and but we don't have enough proof of that. Well, I always used to just think, you know, rich people are just so greedy and it's capitalism and they just don't care. They just want more money. Recently, I've been like, I think that this has actually been more deliberate, deliberately orchestrated. It just, it really feels like there's something more to what is going on. So how, what do you, okay, if you had to prove or what type of evidence do you think would be needed to find out the truth? Like why this is happening? What would we have to look for? If we had alien sightings, if we have extraterrestrial or supernatural beings among us, then I would say, okay, yeah, these supernatural beings are just trying to kill all of us. That's why they're doing it. But if they're all human beings like us, and we share the same consciousness, and we poop and we bleed the same way, and we have the same emotions, fear and envy, they're just behaving the same way we would. Really? Yeah. You don't think they're just, they're literally moving pawns on a chessboard trying to, I don't know what their gain is, but power. They have it told that they're on a different level. It's power. They're not worried about paying their bills. Yeah, obviously yeah. it's not money because they can make, they can print money if they want it. it right. They've, they've been printing print money from generations to generations. So money is definitely not the, the, the driving force here. And if money is not the driving force, they've already enslaved us. Right. So. But not all of us. We constantly break away because the human spirit is resilient. If you notice, a lot of us are starting to become awake. Woke. Woke. Not the You're extreme woke. You're becoming awake. You're awake. <laughs> I think there needs to be a different word because the yeah, ultra, I feel like woke means something else. Yeah, the ultra left have corrupt, they have corrupted that word. We're more conscious. conscious. We're smarter. We know a lot of us who are we're awakened. Yeah, pers we we're perceptive, and we're paying attention to to our environments. We're no longer we don't want to be sheep anymore. There's a lot of sheep. Don't get me wrong, but some of us, we're paying attention, we're researching, we're reading, we're asking questions. They don't like that. And the more influence you get, that's when you start getting like canceled, your YouTube channel getting banned. Because you're, if you think about it, like if you, if you were the CEO of a company, mm -hmm. If there's an employee that's over there running their mouth and not trying to fall in line, you're gonna fire them, right? Yeah. That's what's going on here. They're the CEO, and some of us are questioning their motives and questioning their money making uh, schemes. And they're trying to put us in our place. I think that's what's really going on. How? Greed, obviously, but power. So we just have to resign. We have to extract ourselves from that. Yeah, our two weeks notice. Like, not even resign. Like, flip them the bird and walk. Like, right? you mm. can kiss my ass with this check. I don't want it anymore. I prefer my freedom. I'd rather sleep outside. Thank you. I really think that's what it takes, and not just in terms of job wise, but. Like also what we eat. I'm not buying from the grocery store anymore. I'm gonna go grow my own food. Um, name it. 
I'm not watching your stupid TV shows propaganda anymore. You're no longer going to program my mind anymore. I'm going to read and watch the content that I want. Mm -hmm. Like you have to start unplugging yourself from these things. That's how you buck the system. It's not easy. It's going to cost you. It's going to cost you. It's going to, it comes with a lot of sacrifice. But that's how you reclaim your power. That, you know, I, I think that's really what's going on. Yeah, the previous generation, you know, they didn't know, they didn't have the information we have now. So they just ate those fast foods and they- They're just like, oh boy, it's fast. It's you know, tasty. Can, yeah, it's, it's tasty and I don't have to cook. Oh, it's a win-win. And they lined up. When I see the line on the burger truck, I'm like, Guys, do you know what you're eating? And because they've grown up doing it, they just keep doing it. But some people wake up and they're like, no, oh, yeah, we did this as kids, but we're not doing it anymore. That's what you're doing right now. You'll go, you'll quest, start to question all these things. Mm -hmm. Like, hmm, this infertility thing is not just unique to me a lot of us are having this issue and it's not just it's not a problem of age it's not a factor of age right and i know and i know you brought up fertility and you're like well is it a factor of age do you think you're just an old lady um you know and then everyone else my age is just having the same issue so the thing is if i look back to the previous generation all of you know, my friends' moms back then, they were also around in their 30s. They all had, like, they were having kids. My mom had her last child um, one year, while well, she was one year older than I was when I had Amara. And that was, I mean, you, like, every pregnancy that my mom had was not planned. It just happened. And she was like, well, I guess I'm pregnant again. So it was like, she never had to try. She never had to make an effort. It just happened. Yeah. And it seems like that's how it always has been in the past. It's just recently when people are like, what's wrong with me? I can't get pregnant. And then, uh, you know, some of us are looking back going, you know, why, why did I even do for like birth control? Clearly, because I mean, Looks like it didn't, you know, was never needed in the first place. Can't get pregnant. I need all this, you know, I need all this medical attention. Oh, and then we're jumping right back to the medical um, procedures to get pregnant. And, you know, those are more chemicals and more interventions. And I think that's also kind of making it worse as well. Even though in some ways it's like, well, we're giving you chemicals to help you get pregnant and stay pregnant, but your body should be able to do it on its own. And so while you are manipulating your body into doing it the whole time, it, it might not be able to do it on its own in the future. It might be kind of messed up later. I know there was one woman that I met a couple of weeks ago from that mom group. Um, she's still dealing with, um, infertility. well, not necessarily infertility, but it's like the aftermath of like, you know, having to stab herself in the leg every, how many, I don't know, weeks or every month or whatever. With what? Um, <laughs> with the syringe. I don't know what she was injecting. I'm guessing it had to be some kind of hormones. Maybe it was progesterone. I don't know. Oh, she really said she, oh she's trying to get pregnant. Oh, she was. She had to, she did that to try to get pregnant. And then throughout the pregnancy, just to stay pregnant, she had to take the, she had to continue taking, I don't know, whatever injection. I didn't really ask her the details, but. And then now she's just like, she looks like a mess. She okay. looks like she's 40, but she's younger than me. Wow. And I mean, she's, she just, she complained a lot about it. 
and she's like yeah just like mess me up and like I think she's going through maybe like a um like a withdrawal or something or just a major hormonal imbalance something's yeah. going on with her a lot of people out there so. dealing with a lot of crazy stuff Julia I mean yeah I don't know I also find that a lot of people have they don't have any fighting spirit in them. Mm-hmm. I know you have fighting spirit. I know I have a, I have a lot of fighting spirit. But when I see people, when placed, when faced with challenges, they just fall apart. Mm-hmm. They're just like, oh, somebody give me some drugs, anything, put me under a knife, do something. Like that, I've never being that guy i think that also has to do with um the disruption in our endocrine system we i think our hormones aren't being regulated properly it's screwing us up because i mean not just with fertility because that's what we were focusing on but if your hormones are messed up then you're going to have mood swings you're going to have fatigue. You can have anxiety and depression. You're, you might not be able to focus. You could have like, like just a terrible memory. How come you didn't have any of those things? Maybe I, maybe I am having it. And <laughs> like, it's just what I, it's like, maybe I would be performing at an even higher level, but it's all these, this hormone disruption that's brought me down here. And maybe I'm just like an amazing, I could be a superhuman, but I'm just kind of like a slightly above average human. <laughs> yeah, you have, yeah, of course you're having it. You're human. You have those mood swings. You have all, but my, I argue that it could be your upbringing, could be upbringing. that you have more of a fighting spirit. You, do, you just don't I give am. in. Could be who you are. Because I've seen people like us who are fighters. We don't just take it. No. Mm-hmm. If something is going wrong, they're at least willing to put up a fight. They might not win, but at least they're like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to stand, stand strong and fight back. And um, I encourage people to, to uh, build that muscle. And it's a muscle. I think you have to build it every day. A will to survive. Yeah. Because we're in a battle here. It's a true survival of the fittest. In this battle, are we fighting someone? Or what is it? Or are we fighting ourselves? Uh Uh-huh. You're talking some. You're talking game now. I think that, first of all, it's a spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. And yes, we're fighting ourselves. Because you have to defeat the self. When you're able to defeat that person, that identity that holds you back, Mm. it allows you to be. And it uh, gives you strength to approach challenges as a warrior and not as a victim. Yourself, your flesh, your, uh, the body is weak. And um, you have to defeat the body. You have to defeat those urges, those, uh, those thoughts, those self limiting thoughts. Mm. You have to defeat them. And it's a daily battle. Because no, anyone who comes and says that they got it, they're lying. Because human nature is fallible. Like we're weak. But you know, we also have inside of us the, the warrior. You have to be able to call up the warrior in the face of battle. We're in a fight here. There's a true battle of ideology, battle of, um, you know, food, fertility. <laughs> fertility. You know, there's power. Health. You know, there's a lot. There's, it's freaking battle going on. And you have to strengthen your mind and call up your inner warrior. 
you're going to make it. That's all I have to say about that. That was pretty good. Good combo. Yeah, I agree. High five. That's the pod. <laughs> I got That's the pod. That. That's the pod. I got that from the besties, my besties. <laughs> <laughs>